Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome back to tonight's second half. Before we jump into tonight's second half, a couple links I'd like to share with you all. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and my merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. The links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. My merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost you a cent. Click that like button. It only takes a second, and please leave a comment. Why, you ask? Well, guys, because all these things, they definitely help, and they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with today's second half, shall we? Today's first encounter is a subscriber encounter. Hello, Jeff. On November 28th of 2014, my life sort of fell apart all at once. In a matter of one day, I lost my job, my business, my company car, and my place to live for reasons that I won't go into detail about here. Let's just say that I was screwed over by my business partner, and that's that. At the time, I had just enough money to either buy a junker vehicle or put down a security deposit and first month's rent on an apartment. I'm a rather resourceful guy and opted for the vehicle. I figured a car was a better move as I could live in it for as long as it took to get my shit together and it would give me more options for finding a new job. I'd lost everything, but I had two things. A full set of camping gear and a girlfriend who still loved me, so I figured I could rough it outside in a cold winter nights until I found a new car and a job. At the time, I had been living in a town that was located on the edge of the Pine Barrens wilderness of southern New Jersey. For those who have never heard of it, the Pine Barrens is a rather unique one million acre forest of mostly pine trees that has lots of deer, turkey, coyote, and some unique prehistoric type plants that only grow in that area. My girlfriend at the time lived with her parents, and despite the fact they barely knew me, she had convinced them to take me in, but I was uncomfortable with that idea and refused the offer. As you can imagine, my girlfriend was beside herself with worry, but she knew I was too proud and just accepted my crazy decision to live outdoors in the wintertime. I chose a spot on the edge of the neighborhood that I had previously lived near, a dirt storage clearing that was being used to dump and store dirt to build a new development of homes. I found a large path into the woods and made a stealth camp only about a quarter of a mile deep into the Pine Barrens. I would sleep in the woods at night and in the morning I would make the short walk into civilization where my woman would pick me up. Once she came to get me I would use her car to drive her to work and then spend the day looking for a vehicle and a new job. I would also take an hour or so to head to the gym to work out and get a shower each day. Around 5 p.m. I would pick her up at work and she would drop me back off near my campsite. Wednesday, December 3rd was to be my fifth and final night in that particular patch of woods. By then I had found a job that I was to start in a few weeks and had purchased an old SUV. It was still at the used car lot. My new car insurance wouldn't be active until the following day. My new job didn't start for a month, but I had already paid for a real campsite far away in another area of the Pine Barrens that I could live in until then. This way, I could have big fires, ride my mountain bike through the trails, and not have to sneak in and out each morning and evening. So December 3rd, 2014 was my last night at my stealth camp on the edge of town. To this day, I enjoy winter camping, and even then, I had done so many times in my life, so I had a routine set up. I used to camp in the cold weather. I always encapsulated my tent with a large, heavy-duty camo tarp. This keeps the weather out very efficiently. It also helps trap the little heat in for comfort, but 
unfortunately makes it so that you can't see outside without lifting the tarp up at your tent entrance to look around. By 8 p.m. or so, I had finished eating and was relaxing, just puffing on my vape and feeling happy that I would be in a much more comfortable situation the next day. Just like every other night at this location, at this time of night, a pack of Kayo was right outside of my tent raising hell. Each night around 8 p.m. they would gather right outside in front of my tent and fight, yelp, and run around. The first two nights I was sort of shocked, but by this time I was used to them and was sure they didn't have the balls to dare attack a full-grown human. But I slept with a 26-inch, very sharp, very tang short sword at my side each night just in case. I was lying on my back in the tent starting to doze off to the sound of the coyote pack when they all started yipping and suddenly ran off deep into the woods together. During the previous nights they would slowly leave the area as a group continuing to scrap and circle the general area so this sudden departure sort of piqued my interest and I opened my eyes to listen. It was dead silent. After a minute or so, I started getting ready to doze off again when a powerful and unpleasant stench filled my tent. I can't begin to explain how overwhelming and terrible the stench was. I sat up in my tent and stuck my face inside of my coat to escape it. It was no use, there was no escaping the smell. It was a combination of extremely bad B.O. mixed with dirty feet, skunk, and shit. I was too overwhelmed by the odor to even ponder what was making it. It was strong enough to make me feel sick. I remember at one point trying to avoid the smell by breathing through my mouth and the odor was so strong that I could taste it on the tip of my tongue. I was at the point of holding my breath and whatever it was that was stinking up my campsite needed to get the hell away. So I decided to go outside of my tent and run whatever it was off. I unsheathed my sword and started to unzip my tent entrance when I heard someone walk down the path in the woods that was located behind my camp. I say someone instead of something because it was clearly a person walking on two feet. I slowly zipped the tent back up and went silent. The path was pretty well traveled during the day by locals walking their dogs and by neighborhood kids, but this was the first time at night that I had heard anyone using this path. Whoever it was was big and heavy because I could actually hear the thud of their feet impacting the dirt path with each step. I had made my stealth camp pretty close to the path for ease of use, but I had camouflaged it so well behind the earth mound with brush and that camo tarp that one could walk within a few yards of it and not see it. The footsteps stopped and then I heard the unmistakable sound of whoever it was leave the dirt path and slowly walk into the woods behind me and to my left. My heart sank and adrenaline filled my bloodstream. I had made it four nights undetected and on my last night I was about to be found. I'm sure I was on some kind of private property and with all the bullshit going on in my life at this time the last thing I needed was for the cops to arrest me and break up my camp. Like I said my camp was well hidden and it showed no signs of anyone being there while I was gone so I was wondering why this person was heading towards me. This whole time the stench was just as strong as ever but had taken backstage in my mind to the current new situation at hand. I could hear whoever or whatever it was carefully and slowly walking closer and closer until they were maybe 20 feet off to my left. They sounded like footsteps of someone trying to sneak up on something or someone else. They stopped at my left side for a moment and then started to walk at a normal noisy pace through the leaves until they were about 15 or 20 yards from my tent in the area where the coyotes would congregate each night. Then they stopped. I could hear deep, hoarse breathing like a giant monster trying to catch its breath. 
I was paralyzed with fear and my heart was pounding out of my chest. Then it walked right up to the front of my tent. I clutched my blade and held my breath. Next, whatever it was, walked very slowly around to the right side of my tent. Still breathing deep and heavy, then it leaned itself right up to the wall of my tent and started to sniff loudly. It took long, deep sniffing noises through its nose and would exhale through its mouth. I was terrified as its space was just feet away from me. At this point, I was growing confused. The only logical thing I could think of was a bear was right outside of my tent. But the thing is that bears are almost non-existent in the Pine Barrens, especially so close to a busy construction site, but I thought to myself, what else could it be? Nothing was making sense. I was sure that I had heard a person on two feet walking this whole time, but no human, no matter how dirty or homeless, could smell that powerful. Plus, the breathing I was hearing sounded more like a giant monster than a human. But monsters aren't real, right? So I rationalized that it had to be a bear. At this point, I had to do something. I figured I would say something out loud. If it was a giant smelly person, I could probably get a response. And if it was indeed a bear, there was a 99.99% .99 chance it would run for its life once it realized there was a human in the tent. One thing I knew was that black bears are terrified of humans. So I took a deep breath and said loudly and sharply, Who's there? And then I whacked the side of the tent it was standing at with a hard and quick backhand. The thing took two steps back and, to my absolute horror, let out the deepest, most terrifying growl I had ever heard. At this point, my heart stopped and I almost shit my pants. It was long and very deep growl, just like dogs, but it sounded like a dog that would have to weigh about 800 pounds. I sat there with the blade poised in shock, terrified and waited for whatever it was to rip through the tarp and kill me on the spot. After what was probably 5 to 10 second growl, it went silent and all I could hear was the deafening noise of my pulse pounding in my head. Then suddenly, to my surprise, it walked away into the forest. I could hear the unmistakable sound of the creature on two legs crashing the dried leaves and twigs underfoot as it walked away. I stayed perfectly still holding my breath until I could not hear it walk anymore. Then I took a deep breath and almost collapsed with relief in the tent. The horrible stench began to get less and less until it finally went away. I was feeling relieved and my heart was starting to finally calm down when suddenly I heard the sound of what could only be a large tree branch being snapped quickly from a tree or snapped in half fouled by it being smashed into a tree or another piece of wood. Right after that it made a noise that sounded like a single very loud dog bark. My heart jumped into full turbo mode once again and I broke out into a cold sweat. After that, I heard nothing else, and it took a good 20 minutes for me to calm down. When the adrenaline finally subsided, I was overwhelmed with exhaustion. I reasoned that if it wanted to do me harm, it would have, and at this point, I was safe to fall asleep. Interestingly enough, I had one of the best nights of sleep I had ever had. In the morning, I packed everything up and got the hell out of there. When my girlfriend picked me up that morning, she took one look at me and asked me why I looked so disturbed. I told her what had happened, and she said it must have been one of the coyotes and I was being dramatic. To this day, the only people who believe me are my brother and my 13-year-old son. I'd always told myself it was a bear. I couldn't come up with another logical conclusion, but, like I said, black bears are all but non-existent in the Pine Barrens. Also, since then, I've done the research and have learned that bears do not have a strong odor at all, even during mating season or while hibernating. The thought of it being a Sasquatch never crossed my mind at the time because I thought they only existed in the northwestern United States and Canada, 
That is, if they existed at all. Besides, what would a mythical creature like that be doing hanging out in a fairly populated New Jersey town like that? I had another, much less dramatic experience in the deep woods of northwestern Pennsylvania in March of 2019 that made me a believer and I began to research cryptids. Since then, I have educated myself on cryptids and now I'm pretty sure it was a Sasquatch that scared the shit out of me that night. My brother, on the other hand, says that because of my proximity to civilization at the time, he thinks it was probably a dog man. I suppose I'll never really know. My life is now perfect, and it's hard to believe that just over five years ago, I was homeless in the woods of New Jersey. I still like to go winter camping alone most every year, but now that I know monsters are real, I will only go into the wilderness areas where I'm allowed to carry a big bore revolver, a 30 6 or a 12 gauge with slugs. Today's second dog man encounter, Turner, Maine, Mystery Beast. The encounter goes like this. My hunting buddy and I headed for the same mountaintop from different points and we couldn't find each other so we went to plan B, which was to return to the point we started and he would pick me up. I waited for a couple hours at the end of a dirt road and waited for my friend when all of a sudden I heard a twig snap right behind me and a big black fluffy tail grazed my left side. I swung my rifle and turned on my flashlight only to see the most horrific animal in a crouching stance showing a mouth full of fangs and ready to jump on me. Now I've been in the woods all my natural born life, but for the life of me, have never seen an animal that was so scary. It looked like a hyena's body with the head of what looked like a rat. Yes, a rat with bulging, popped out eyes and snarling at me. Was I looking at Stephen King's werewolf, or was this a 1970s flashback? The animal stood in front of me, crouched down, ready to spring up on me, and I raised my gun to fire, but the house light in the dark night was aligned with my shot. I dropped the gun, still amazed by what my flashlight was revealing to me. So I shouted at the animal, What the fuck are you? to which it turned and ran. Catching my breath and my wits, I cursed my friend for being late and told him the story for the five hour ride home over and over again. All of the while he insisted it was a coyote, a wolf, or someone's freak pet. I was unfazed as I assured him it was like no animal I had ever seen before. A rat-like face on a hyena body with the color of a black wolf. He laughed at me for years, and ten years later a woman from Turner, Maine was sick of her pets being eaten alive when the animal was hit by a car at the power lines and made the paper. Witnesses started coming out of the woodwork, claiming it killed their horses, dogs, cats, and deer, only eating its organs like heart, liver, etc. The animal had been killing everything in sight for ten years until it or another family member was hit. Oh, now, here's my chance to call my hunting buddy and prove my credibility. So the call went down like this. Hey bud, look up Turner, Maine, Mystery Beast on the internet. Pause, pause, hysterical laughter, followed by his wife picking up the phone. Hank, what did you say to him? He's delusional. He got on the phone, apologized, and said, Hank, I knew this thing had an impact on you. And I said, told you this thing was not of the earth. A werewolf was not out of the question. It was smelly and scary as hell. Two years later, it or another family member was the star of Discovery Show Monster Quest, and they did an awesome rendition with several neighbor accounts of their personal experiences with this menace to society. I wished I had shot it because I would have saved many pets in the area and I will never ever put doe pee on my head again. 
Not a chucacabra, but not of this world. So, don't think they're not out there watching you. All right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed tonight's second half. How about that first subscriber submitted encounter? You know, I just want to give you guys a heads up. Um, that was his first encounter. He has experienced something else since his life has dramatically changed. And um, he had a hyena like dog man in the back of his, behind the woods in the back of his house in New Jersey. Um, just a terrifying experience. But can you imagine taking a shot at a dog man being so scared dropping your firearm? Whew. I mean, if it doesn't, it just gets from bad to worse to WTF. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Thank you very much for all your support and kindness. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and may the Great Spirit watch over us all. And may He guide us down that path we call life.